Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's Digital Glaucoma Support Group. Thank you so much for joining. Today's session is called All About Eye Drops. I'm Joanna Bradley, Head of Support Services at Glaucoma UK. Our speaker this afternoon is our very own Trish Ganscheck. Many of you have spoken to her in the past, as she's one of our fabulous helpline advisors. She's very familiar with all of the questions you may have about eye drops, from how they work, to side effects, to how to use aids to help you get them in your eyes. I'm so glad so many of you have chosen to spend your afternoon with us. And I'm just going to talk, to spend a few minutes talking about the format of today's talk and the technical side of Zoom. So after my introduction, Trish is going to talk for about 30, 35 minutes on eye drops, and then we'll have lots of time for a Q&A at the end. So just to go through some of the technical sides of how this Zoom group will work. We can't hear or see audience members, but you should be able to see and hear me and Trish. We're also being streamed live on Facebook. And if you're watching there, you can ask questions by commenting on the feed. There'll be two short polls launched during the webinar as well. These are to help us see the difference the sessions are having and if you feel you're learning things. I'm going to launch the first one now and this will stay open for about a minute or two. When you've answered the question and clicked submit, the box should disappear. If you're having any technical difficulties, try turning off other devices which are connected to the Wi-Fi or you can leave the session and rejoin using the same link. As I, as I said, we'll have a Q&A session after Trish has spoken. If you'd like to ask a question at any point, please wiggle your mouse or touch your screen and you'll see a Q&A box appear on the screen. If you click on this, you'll see the box appear. If you have any questions at any point, type them in. You can ask them whenever and we can see the questions throughout the session. Even if you don't have any questions, keep an eye on that box. If you like a particular question, you can click like, and the most popular questions will come to the top of the list, and we'll try to answer those first. The chat button can be used if you're having any technical issues, but please keep your questions about eye drops in the Q&A section. It just makes it easier for us to keep things all in one place. We really want this session to be interactive and cover all the topics you're really interested in. So please do ask any questions. The only question, the only silly question is one you wanted to ask but didn't. We'll activate closed captioning during this talk. I'm just gonna do that now. Oh, I'll do that in a tick, sorry. If you, if you want to switch them on, click on the button marked CC, live transcript. This is automatic subtitling, which finds medical words hard. We've seen trabeculectomy turn to Rebecca said to me and Trab turn to Trump. So Glaucoma UK is the UK's charity for people with glaucoma. We work in three main areas to prevent glaucoma sight loss. Firstly, we campaign to raise awareness of the disease. We want people to know what glaucoma is and about the importance of getting your eyes tested. The earlier glaucoma is diagnosed, the less likely people are to experience sight loss. Secondly, we provide support and advice to people with glaucoma and those who care for them. We have information leaflets, a helpline, a buddy service and a patient forum. And we provide training and advice to professionals looking after people with glaucoma. All our services are free. Finally, we fund research into the diagnosis, treatment, care and prevention of glaucoma. So I'm going to hand over now to our speaker, Trish. Don't forget to post any questions you have for Trish in the Q&A. So Trish, thank you, over to you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, good evening. Oh, hello everyone. Good evening, I'm wishing the day away already. Um, my name's Trish, as Joe said, I'm the uh, one of the glaucoma advisors on our helpline. And today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about eye drops, okay, what they actually do. But more importantly, I'm gonna talk to you about compliance aids that will help you put your drops in and alleviate a lot of the anxiety that comes along with, with pushing your eye drops in. Okay, so firstly, eye drops. A lot of the time we receive calls and people say, well, why do I need eye drops? You know, I don't, I don't see the benefits of the eye drop. I don't know why I have to do it. The reason you're given eye drops is because it is to control the pressure within the eye. And 
if a person's pressure is too high, it can cause more damage. So by giving you the eye drops, it reduces the pressure in the eye. And by doing that, it reduces the risk of any more damage being done, any more progression of your glaucoma. Now, sun drops you take in the evening. Um, the reason these particular drops are given to you in the evening is that they work better when you're sleeping, this particular group of drugs. So just in case you wonder why it has to be done at night, that is the reason. Other drops can be taken during the day because that's how they've been produced. They, they, those particular drops work better throughout the day rather than the evening. Especially if you have a beta blocker or a combination drop, it's best to have it in the day because if you take it at night, it can cause disruption to your sleep. Okay, so this is the reason why you're asked to take the drops during the day. Now, some drops increase the fluid in the eye, and I'll go through with you about the fluid in the eye. So there's the two main parts of the eye that I'm going to talk to you about today are the ciliary body and the trabecular meshwork. So the ciliary body of the eye, it produces a fluid called the aqueous humor, and that gives the eye all the nutrients that it needs to keep it healthy. And that flows into the eye, and then it flows out of something called the trabecular meshwork, which are tiny little holes, we can say, around the outside of the iris. It's like a sponge, and it gets absorbed into the eye, into the body, back out through the ciliary body again. Now, for someone who hasn't got glaucoma, it flows brilliantly out of the ciliary, through the trap, back out again and around. But if someone has glaucoma, it means that their drainage system isn't working as well as it could do. So if you imagine a blocked sink, for example, okay? So the tap is running, the water's coming out, going out of the plug hole, but it's not going out as well as it could do. So pressure is building up. So you need to unblock that plug hole for the water to flow freely and that will reduce the pressure. And it's the same with using drops. That's exactly what the drops do. They relieve the pressure in the eye. It sort of unblocks it, okay? That's the reason why you're taking the eye drops. Now with eye drops, sometimes you can get side effects. So some, it can be the preservative in the drop that's causing the problem. And this is normally shown by redness or inflammation of the eye. If that ever happens, don't feel like you have to leave it between appointments, okay? Phone up the hospital, ask to speak to the eye secretary, and then they will relay that back to the consultant and the consultant will get back to you. Maybe via the secretary again, but they won't, but the consultants will want to know if you're having a problem with the drops because if you're using a drop and it's causing you a lot of pain and discomfort, you've got that temptation to stop taking it. And that isn't what your consultant wants to happen. So make sure um, it's the eye secretary, basically, because if you phone the appointment section, you won't get much joy to go straight to the, the top. Um, other side effects may be ones that you read on the patient information leaflets that are affecting your body. OK, now, a good way of stopping these from happening is doing something called a punctual occlusion. And that is basically just a posh way of telling you that um, when you put your eye drop in, if you close your eye and press on your tear duct gently like this for up to two minutes, that stops the drop from getting into the tear duct, going to the back of the throat and into the bloodstream. And that will encourage side effects to happen. So it's best to do it on each eye individually, okay? And always make sure that when you put your drop in, you put it in the center of the eye. So when you pull down your pocket, you put the drop in the center of the pocket. Some people, they put it nearer the tear duct and that's never a good thing because then the, you're basically pulling it into the tear duct. Although the eye is absorbing the drop, doing its job, a lot of it is getting into the tear duct to the back of the throat. So, just try the punctual occlusion if you don't do it already and see if it helps at all, okay? But as I say, if you ever have problems with your eye drops, always get back to the consultant, and go via the eye secretary, okay? If they're not available, you can ask to speak to the PALS department, which stands for the Patient Advice Liaison Services that most hospitals have, or an eye clinic liaison officer, 
or an ECLO short. Okay, so that's a little bit I'm going to tell you about your eye drops. Now I'm going to talk to you about um, the compliance aids. All right then. So this is why I turn into a shopping channel presenter. I apologize about that, but there won't be item numbers or costs at the bottom of this video. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you are the ones that are available free on prescription. Okay, so the first one is called an optic hair. I hope you can see that clearly. And it's hinged. Okay, so you'll see on the side here, these two little hinges, these two little clips here. And what you do, you unclip it like this. And on the inside, there's like a little keyhole groove here where you would put the drop bottle in. Now, before you put the drop bottle in, just loosen the cap slightly, but don't remove it. Okay, just leave it loosen slightly. Okay, so on the top of the optic here, there's a hinge section as well. So if you open the hinge section, it's easier then to access the, the keyhole groove. And what you need to do is, if you just clip it, into the groove and you do it by the it's between the thread and the and the top of the bottle basically and with the optic hair you get two little collars okay two rubber collars so the black one you get a black and a gray the back the black one if you clip it just under the groove just push it in that secures the bottle okay so once you've done that you can click it shut and then remove the cap. Um, always have a clean tissue as well close by on a clean surface too. You'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. So once you've done this, you would clip the top shut, okay? And you'll see that there's like a, a cutout here. This is called, um, it's just a, basically for your finger to get in, in there. And on the side, there are two little levers on the side there. There's little, things that come out they tend to pop out once you've put the bottle in and what you would then do is so what you would do is you would pull down your lower lid okay and making sure you put it over your eye then you pull down your lower lid in that cutout and then you just look up at the ceiling there and then you would press these levers on the side and what the levers do they will squeeze the bottle for you and it makes sure that the drop goes in the right position of the eye. Okay. Um, now these are free on prescription. Okay. And so it's good to, if you're going to have them, they come in different colors too. So if you can get them free on prescription and you had more than one drop, ask if they can be prescribed for you. And when you go to the pharmacy, ask them if you can have them in different colors so you can put different drops in different ones. Okay. Um, the benefits of the optic hair is that if you're using the drop, you can actually leave it in the compliance aid for the amount of time that the drop should last, which is normally 28 days. But once you finish using the drop, you can just you can just replace the cap. Replace the cap like this, click it shut, and you can just store it away. Um, normally not above 25 degrees centigrade, they say on the leaflet. Some drops can be refrigerated, but what we say is um, always check with the manufacturer or check the patient information leaflet for the storage instructions, okay? Um, also, what I, um, I forgot to mention, you know, the, the other gray collar. This is because you get a lot of generic bottles now, different shapes and sizes. So sometimes the black collar doesn't secure it as well as it could do. So by using the gray collar as well, it makes it extra secure, okay? So if ever you get the optic here, make sure there's two collars included. Um, also, before you use it, make sure it's clean and you wash it in warm soapy water and dry it with a dry cloth as well. And also, if you're taking the drop out of the bottle after you use it, wash it again and do the same thing. Okay, so you know I mentioned to you about tissue. The reason for that is sometimes when you put your drop in, you might have the excess running down your cheek. So just wipe that away with a with, with the tissue. Okay. Um, I also forgot. I do apologise. Also, once you've put your drop in, 
do what I said earlier, do the punctual occlusion with any drop. Some patient information leaflets ask you to do the punctual occlusion, others don't. But we always encourage people with whatever eye drop you use, always do the punctual occlusion because it is a benefit in whatever eye drop you use other than obviously a dry eye drop if you use dry eye drops. Now on the, actually on the, um, on the, on the dry eye drop side of things, if you do use them, um, it means your see your eyes are very sensitive and you might eyes might sting a little bit more than say someone else once they've used the eye drop. So what you could do if you wanted to, you could put your dry eye drop in 20 minutes before you put your glaucoma drop in. And that way it's going to lubricate and hydrate the eye and it might make it more gentle for when you put your glaucoma drop in. Some people put them in 20 minutes before and also 20 minutes after. It's totally up to you. It wouldn't make um, it wouldn't be any, anything detrimental because they're just dry eye drops. They just hydrate and soothe the eye. OK, so the next um, compliance that I'm going to show you is also on prescription. It's from the same optic care range, but these are called arthros. And these are designed specifically for people with dexterity problems. OK, so if you can't say lift your shoulder too high or you've just got weak hands, you, you know, you find it difficult to squeeze. So with this one, it's best to lay it on the table, okay, and to, um, to, to get it ready. But you'll see it's got longer arms, which will be what you'd squeeze, and it has this eyepiece, which is hinged, okay? So what you would do, again, loosen the cap a little bit on the bottle, but don't remove it, okay? Then you would, it's easier when it's on the desk, then you would open the arms, and push the bottle in, okay, until it clicks. There's two little grooves on the back here, so you won't be able to push it too far that it'll come out the other side. Once you've done that, remove the cap and then click it shut. And that's ready to go, okay? So you can either do it this way, it's got a little cut out here again, pull down your lower lid, look up at the ceiling, squeeze the arms, and that will release a drop for you. Or if you prefer, you can do it this way as well because you can turn it either way, okay? So just do that, look up at the ceiling and squeeze that as well, okay? So as I said, this is called the OptiCare Arthro 5 and these are available on prescription. And these will hold a bottle between two and a half mil to two and a half mil to five mil, okay? And there is another size that I'm gonna show you now, but it works, it's as simple as that really. It's made specifically for people with dexterity problems, okay? And this, as I say, this is part of the OptiCare range. So it's the same range as this one. This is the, the universal OptiCare, but as I say, this is called the Arthro 5. So that will cover you up to five mil bottles. First, that's the first one. The second one, it works exactly the same way as the Arthro 5, but this is the Arthro 10. And this fits bottles between 10 and 10 to 20 mil. It works in exactly the same way, okay? The only thing is, if you're taking a drop called Combigan, even though the Combigan bottle is a five mil bottle, it's quite fat and chunky, you can see compared to say an ordinary size bottle. All right then. So if you're using a Combigan, the Arthro that you need is the Arthro 10, okay? Which is always a cream one, Arthro 10 cream. And the first one I showed you is Arthro 5 blue. So, so they can differentiate the size, okay? And the next one I'm going to show you is so many choices. The next one I'm going to show you is um, the Santen Multi Dose Compliance Aid. Okay. Now, many of you out there, you may be on preservative free drops because you can't tolerate an ordinary bottle that has preservative in it. Um, 
you may notice normally they come in individual vials, but more and more now they're coming in bottles that last up to 28 days again. And they're slightly different design. They're much more chunkier, okay, as you can see. And they'll have a blue blister on the top of it, okay, rather than, rather than a little spout compared to the other ones, All right? So, and I've, I've been told, and I know that once you have this, and you try to position it over the eye and squeeze it, it can take about two to three seconds for the drop to come out. And sometimes that can be a bit a long of a wait, but it's the way it's been designed, the mechanism on side it, okay? So I've managed to find the manufacturer, Santen, who've actually designed a compliance aid to fit these bottles, any form of bottles. Um, this is a glaucoma drop bottle, but you can also get, um, Clinitas multi-dose, which is a dry eye drop, and that's in the same design. So it will also fit in here as well. So if you're thinking, I haven't got compliance safe for my dry eye and it's Clinitas, then you could use this, okay? So the way this one works is, it has again, a little cutout there that will go around the eye. And it also has, there you go, you can see that in the light there, it has like a little spy hole there as well. And what you would do, you would just open it up a little bit there and you can just squeeze, push the bottle through until it clicks into um, a collar that's actually molded into the top of this. And you'll see as soon as you put it in, these arms here on the side, they're ready to, to squeeze the bottle. But also, I like this because it's simple and it does what it says on the tin, okay? The simpler, the better. Also, on the side here, there's little cut out, little grooves, basically, where you would put your fingers in and it will help you to hold it in place. I apologize if you hear whinging in the background, it's my dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so basically what you need to do, make sure that when you put this over your eye, the peephole is at the top, okay? So find a comfortable position. Um, some people stand in front of the mirror, others sit down, which I like better actually because it's more secure. Sit down, tip your head back, look at the ceiling. Other people even laying down on the bed and put your eye drops in that way too, okay? So what you would do, this hasn't got a cutout by the way, so pull down your lower lid first, look up at the ceiling, put this over your eye, okay? And then just squeeze the levers and it will dispense the drop into your eye. Um, with this one, you can't leave it in the compliance aid because the spout isn't long enough. So once you've done it, just remove it. And again, wipe your cheek or do the punctal occlusion. Wipe your cheek with the tissue if any excess drop runs down your face. But again, wash the compliance aid and dry it with a clean cloth. Rule of thumb, really, if you use it and you finish with it, wash it and dry it, okay? So that's that one. Okay, so I've got one more compliance aid to show you that will fit a bottle, and then I will go on to the compliance aid that fit the individual vials. So this one is the, is the auto drop. It looks a little bit like the old Optrex eye bars, I always like to think. Um, but this has a little cutout at the bottom here, a little hinge section with a keyhole groove again, okay? So what you would do, you would get your drop bottle, again, loosen the cap, but don't remove it. This is for hygiene reasons, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so make sure that it's face down. So what you would do, you would get the bottle here and you would clip it again by the base to the top of the bottle here. Then remove the cap and then you could just click it shut, okay? Now, you shouldn't have to force this at all. It should just click shut really easily. And once you've done that, you're good to go, basically. So on here, I don't know if you can see that on my camera actually, but on here, there's like a little groove section here. And that shows, that's the top bit, that's the groove that you need to have at the top. 
And when you look through, you'll see a tiny, tiny little pinhole there, okay? And that is another focus or a focal point for you when you put your drop in. So you would basically pull down your lower lid, put this within the eye socket, squeeze the bottle, and that will put the drop in. Then you would do your punctual occlusion and then wipe any excess away from your cheek again. Again, this one, it should really be removed from the compliance area once you've finished using it. Now, with the auto drop, you can also get something called the auto squeeze, okay? They work together. So again, this is for people with dexterity problems who have it, who find difficulty in squeezing the bottle, okay? And this works alongside this. So on this one, on the inside, there's little raised sections, okay? And these are the sections that will squeeze the bottle for you. So what you would do, making sure that these are on the facing up, the little groove bits, you would just push it under the auto drop that's already there. And once you've done that, you would put it over your eye and then, oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, then you, you put that, the grooves have to be facing down, sorry, so it squeezes the bottle. And then you would put it over your eye again, and you would squeeze the lever, these wings, and they would squeeze the bottle for you, and that will administer the drop. What I will say, um, with any compliance say that you have, they don't control the amount of drop that goes in your eye, okay? The drops that go in your eye, there may be small drops or big drops, but that's due to how much you squeeze that bottle. But it is a case of practice makes perfect. I think everyone squeezes the bottle a bit too much when they first get it, or maybe a little bit too little when they first get it. But in the end, you find a happy medium and you're able to. Now, if ever you do squeeze the bottle and you feel like too much drop has come out and you've over, overdone it, overdosed yourself on the drop, don't worry, he won't do that because what happens is the eye will only absorb as much as it needs to. And the rest is just, it'll just run down your cheek and just wipe that away, okay? The only thing that I would say don't do is if you put your drop in your eye and you feel like you haven't put enough in and then 10 minutes later you think, oh, I'll put a bit more in, don't do that because that means you're overdosing on the drop. So as long as you feel the drop going in, you know you've done it. Okay, so don't be tempted to, to put it in twice because that's a no no. Plus, A, you're wasting the drop, and B, as I said, you could be overdosing on the eye. So, there are the bottles. So, now I'm going to go on to the um, individual vials for you. Okay. So, the first one is this it's called a Taya Iot. Okay. And this has been designed specifically for individual vials. Now, these will fit preservative free glaucoma drops, and it will also fit a lot of the preservative free dry eye drops that sometimes come in individual vials as well. So the way it's designed is, again, it's got a little peep hole there. So, it know, so you know to have this at the top, so you're looking up at the ceiling. It comes in like... The way it's designed is because it has two lips. So this one, the bottom lip, will actually pull down on your eye to make that pocket on the lower lid. So you don't even have to use your finger to do that. And it has a little button underneath there as well. Okay. Right. So first of all, obviously make sure you've washed it and dried it on a clean cloth. And then when you get your vial, if you shake the vial or flick it like that, okay? That will help when it, for it to come out. And then you would just twist off the cap. And once you've done that, with the, this peep hole at the top, make sure it's at the top. On the little groove here, you would push it into the groove and then you'll see that the tip of the compliance aid, of the actual drop, uh, the, the, the vial, the dose, the pop out there. And then what you would do, you would use this to pull down your lower lid and then rest the other one against your brow. And then once you've found a comfortable position, 
press that lever and the drop will come out. Okay. Now, once you've one drop, one vial sometimes works on two eyes. Um, sometimes there's not enough. So once you finish with that, even if there's a little bit of a drop left, just dispose of it. Okay. Never keep it because you can't replace the cap on it and bacteria can affect it. So always throw it away after you've used it, even if there is any left. Okay. Do that. And again, wash your compliance aid and um, dry it with a clean cloth. So <clears throat> the last one I'm going to show you is the Santen Green Single Dose um, Compliance Aid. Now, this one, it takes most dry eye drops, but it doesn't take monopost, okay? If you're using monopost, I would suggest you try the Taya Iot. So with this one, it has a groove on the top. And the reason for that is it helps with removing the actual cap of, of the vial. So you will just slot it in as I'm doing now, twist it, and it pulls the, the cap off for you. Okay. So with this again, there is a peep hole at the top. So it knows, so you know it's in the right position to above your eye. And then with this, with the vial, again, shake it or flick it, whichever you prefer. And then what you would do is you would just, there's a little groove here. You would slide it into the groove until it can't go any further. And then you'll see it'll, you can't see actually, but it, the tip of it comes out at the end here, okay? So what you would do again with this one, you will have to pull down your lower lid. So pull down your lower lid. Position yourself, look for that little peep hole there, squeeze these little wings, and they would squeeze the bubble of eye drop, and that would just put it into your eye. And again, wash it after use and dispose of any unused eye drops that you have left. Okay, so they're all the compliance aids really that um, we recommend to people, okay? A few of them are available on our website, but eventually, uh, hopefully, all of these will be available on our website in the next couple of coming weeks. Now, I have come across another one for the um, preservative-free bottle drops, okay? This is called an eye guide, and it's very, very similar to the Opticare, the way it works, okay? So I'll show you... Um, how it works just in case and then I think Joe's going to put up a link maybe on um, where to get it from but basically you would get your your drop bottle and you would put it into position here into there clip it shut as you would with the OptiCare close the cap and then you're good to go you would just put it over your eye Pull down your lower lid through that little finger hole there, and the eye drop will be dispensed into your eye. But again, it won't just dispense one drop. None of these compliance aids, as I say, they will dispense one drop, but the size depends on how often, how much you squeeze on the actual compliance aid themselves. Like I say, these we aren't we aren't um, supplying these, but. Um, as I said, I think Joe's putting the link up, but otherwise, um, you just go into, um, you put in eye guide on the search bar, eye range, and it will come up. I think Joe's actually sharing the link there now for you. Okay, so um, that is basically all of the um, compliance aids now that I've shown you. Um, also, just one more thing, if it's okay, Joe. Am I mm -hmm. yeah. okay for yeah. time, darling? Yeah, no, no, no. good. Okay, good. Um, so if you wear contact lenses, make sure you take, when, you, when you take your contact lenses out to put your drop in, leave at least 15 minutes before you put the contact lenses back in the eye. Okay, but the, um, the patient information leaflet should advise you of that, but just in case, just something to keep in mind. Okay, I hope that's been helpful to everyone. Thanks, Trish. That was a, a really helpful overview of um, eye drops and a really nice in-depth uh, explanation of how to use all the different compliance aids. We've got loads and loads of questions. So I'll start by doing all the questions about 
kind of how to do high drops and then any questions about compliance saves we'll we'll do afterwards so we've heard a few about um punctual occlusion so mm -hmm. i was wondering if you could just show people the technique again and then how long it is that they should do punctual occlusion for what's the kind of best practice range of timings yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, first of all, check your patient information leaflet because if they do mention punctual occlusion, the time that they recommend can vary. OK, but we recommend one to two minutes. So what you would do is once you've put your drop in, you just close your eye, press on your tear duct. OK, that's closest to the bridge of your nose. And you hold that for, as I say, between one to two minutes. OK, and I would say do it on both eyes or do it on each eye individually because unless you're a bit of a quick draw and draw and you know you sort of put drop in drop in do it that's fine but a lot of people they find that, that if they do it that way um there's a chance that some of the drop would have gone into the tear duct on the first eye before they've actually done it on the second eye the punctual occlusion so yeah do that up to two minutes yeah on both eyes so someone's asked if it's possible to do it for too long no, it's not. It's not, but it's all depends how much time you've got to waste, really, I suppose. But no, no, one to two minutes is fine. I mean, some people do feel more confident if they do it for much longer, you know, which is fine. If that makes them feel better, carry on doing that. But really, you don't have to. One to two minutes is sufficient. That gives you the benefits, doesn't it? And any longer, you might get a bit more benefit, but, you know, not, yeah, absolutely. not yeah. much proof of that. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you. And there's been a few questions about timing for eye drops. So someone's asked, does it matter if I put my eye drops in up to an hour before I go to bed? No, not really. The important thing with eye drops, you need to choose a time and stick to that time every day. OK, so you can put your in drops in about, say, half nine, ten o'clock. OK, every night. But. Um, and make sure you do it every night because at the same time, because that way you're treating your eyes every 24 hours. It's a bit like when you're prescribed antibiotics, you know, you're asked to space them out evenly throughout the day. And it's the same with eye drops. So, yeah, so put them in a time that's suitable for you, but always stick to the same time every evening. So if you go to bed at a different time each night, it's better to put them in at a regular time, even if that's not just before bedtime. So you say yeah. 9 p.m. every day rather than at bedtime every day. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. just stick to it. I mean, I mean, life gets in the way. We all know this. So, I mean, you might be out with friends or something like that. You know, you can't put your drop in around the same time, but try to try to put it in an hour either side occasionally if you can't help it. But otherwise stick to a time and put that drop in at the same time every evening. And so we've had a very general question of what is the best time of day to put eye drops in to reduce pressure. That depends a, a bit on the, the type of eye drop as well as your personal yeah. lifestyle, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, with the with the nighttime drop, I mean, they do say 9, 9.30 is a good time to put the drop in because pressure can rise at night or early hours of the morning, I think between two and three. So those particular dots work better, you know, but otherwise there's no, there's no like perfect time to put drop in during the day. You know, as long as you put them in regularly, if you're taking two drops, make sure you space them 12 hours apart. So if you put it in at eight, nine o'clock in the morning, make sure you put them in at eight, nine o'clock at night. Okay. So it's important that so that way you're treating your eye every 12 hours. Um, and just actually going back on that, if you are putting a drop in twice a day and you're also putting a drop in at night, okay, and the times are very close together, um, you, you should leave at least 10 minutes between each drop, between five and 10 minutes between each drop. But always, so if you're saying, if you're using COSOP, for example, using it twice a day, put the COSOP in first, your last one at night, and then put your nighttime drop in. Five to ten minutes afterwards yeah. and does it matter what order um people put in the different eye drops so someone said she has bimatoprost and dozolamide does it matter you know as long as you leave five minutes between the eye drop does it matter which way around you go first no it doesn't matter as no. long as you put them both in that's as long nice. as you put them both in yeah that's the most important thing to put them in really yeah thank you
Um, I'm just scanning through. Can I ask people to try and put questions in the Q&A rather than the chat? It just makes it a little bit easier for me to keep track of which questions I've asked. I will follow them. I will find them in the chat, but just to make my life a little bit easier if, if possible. Um, so someone said they don't use iDrops yet, but they're wondering how difficult they are to put in without a compliance aid. Right, OK. No, I mean, it's... It's, uh, it isn't normally a problem, really, you know, I mean, I can I can demonstrate, I won't take the cap off because I don't really want to put a homo drop in my eye. But basically what you would do, you could either do it this way, like pull down your lower lid, position it above the eye and do that. Or there is um, something called the wrist on knuckle technique or walk for short. OK, and the way that works is you would make a fist, making sure your thumb is under your fingers. You would raise the middle knuckle here and then you would pull down your lower lid with the middle knuckle and with the other one just rest it on there on the rest rest the wrist on the back of your hand and just squeeze the bottle and that will dispense it as well and as i said you know the um the auto squeeze if you didn't want to use a compliance save but you just had difficulty squeezing the bottle you can use this on its own to, to actually squeeze the bottle as well. So, and that's one way of doing it. I so said the wrist on knuckle, or another one you can just lay on the bed, okay? So um, when you lay on the bed, what you would do, you would rest the bottle against the bridge of your nose like this, so that the tip is in line with the eye. You would pull down your lower lid, squeeze the bottle, and when the drop goes in, you can even move your eye a little bit to the outside, make sure it's there, and then you just close your eyes and do the punctal occlusion. So they're the two other options to how to put your drops in. So there are different different techniques, aren't there? And I think what we, you know, lots of people maybe find it quite hard when they start to be given eye drops to sort of work out the technique that's right for them. And we we always say, don't we, like practice, you know, keep practicing and find the technique that works for you. Yeah, um, it is definitely practice, yeah. practice, practice, basically. You will get there. Some people go back to clinic and they're worried that they haven't put the drops in. But then once the consultant checks the pressure and they can see the pressure has gone down, it shows that they have been putting the drops in right all the time. As I said, as long as you feel a drop going in, you're doing it right. This is it, you know, sort of thing. But if you feel like you've totally missed your eye, which can sometimes happen, and you don't feel it going in at all, then, yeah, put another drop in, you know. But if you feel like, if you, you people, you would feel a drop going in, really, because your eye will feel a bit blurry, you know. So it doesn't matter the amount of drop that goes in. As soon as the drop goes in, you'll know then that when you go back to clinic, the pressure would have gone down and it shows that you've been doing a good job. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to know otherwise, isn't it? I think someone asked if they, how to know if they're doing punctual occlusion, right? And, you know, that is whether you can, you can feel yourself pressing on that little bump. But otherwise, it's quite hard to know, isn't it, for patients as to sort of it whether is. they're doing it right? Absolutely. I mean, but with punctual occlusion... Some say, some even just, some, well, once you close your eyes, it's like a shutter on the eye, it protects it anyway, you know. But by closing your eyes and just pressing gently in the corner, you're making sure that it's going in. So basically, at any, just so you've got that fatty tear, you're, where that little fatty lump is on the corner of your eye, that's your tear duct. So as long as you close your eyes and press gently on that, you know you're, you know you're doing it. And, and yeah, keep persevering. And if you're having any problems, then obviously that's what that's what we're here for. Um, the helpline, just as a helpline advisor, and she's very happy to help people if um, if they're having any difficulties at all with that. Great. Um, so we've got a question about latanoprost and timolol as a combination drop. Um, do you know the best time to put that one in? Um, normally, it's during the day that one. If it's a combination. Latanoprost and Timolol, let me have a look. Yeah, once daily. You know, I said near at the beginning of my talk, I said if if you have a drop, a drop that contains a beta blocker, which is what Timolol is, they recommend you take it during the day, okay? However times they prescribe it to you. And the reason being is that because it has beta blocker in it, it can cause um, sleep disturbance. So take it during the day. So choose the time during the day, whether it's breakfast time, tea time, whatever, you know. But um, you do it then, yeah, but don't do it at night. Definitely don't do it at night, not if it's a combination drop. 
Okay, great. Thank you. So someone who's more questions about sort of combination drops, someone who's using brenzolamide twice a day. So they yeah. take them at half six a.m. and six thirty p.m. And yeah, then the Zalacom at night, so around nine p.m. Mm -hmm. Does it should they be taking them closer together or are those times okay? No, those times are perfect. Absolutely perfect. You don't have to change your regime at all. Just carry on. Lovely. Thank you. Um, can I read or watch TV soon after putting in my eye drops? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, it doesn't affect you at all. It won't affect you. I mean, it might feel a bit blurry, maybe you might feel, you know, but there's no reason why you just can't carry on with what you were doing beforehand after you put your drop in. Yeah, so that so we can make that a kind of broader thing, can't we, that eye drops shouldn't really stop you from um, doing things. There's some things with glaucoma that aren't great, but the eye drop shouldn't. Um, no, absolutely. A good story, actually, is my colleague Helen, she spoke to someone many years ago, he was a rock climber, and he said he couldn't put his drops in because he was halfway up a cliff. She said, yes, you could. And then he finally said, actually, yeah, I did do it. It was up a cliff, put his drop in, carried on climbing the, climbing the cliff. So yeah, you can. Yeah, absolutely. So as long as you can see clearly and, and therefore you're safe, then everything is fine. Yes. Um, yep. Great. Okay, and then we've had a few questions about um, where to get the different compliance aids from. Now, I know it's it's quite a sort of a long list, but maybe if you could just clarify which ones you can get free on prescription or on prescription yeah, um, and therefore for free, and which ones are on our website. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it's the OptiCare is free on prescription. Okay, and so you can get them in a range of colours. So if you have more than one drop, maybe see if you can get ones in different colours. Um, the blue arthro, that is also available on prescription. And the cream arthro is available on prescription. Now, we know they're available on prescription because we've checked with the manufacturers on numerous times just to clarify that it's still the case. And it is the case. Some doctors say, well, no, it isn't. And you can argue the point, you know, um, the, they are actually free on prescription. But I think a lot of it is to do with the area of the country you are maybe, maybe their targets that they won't prescribe them, but they are available on prescription. And um, if you don't have much luck with doing it that way though, you can get them on Amazon. Now prices vary a lot, okay? So I would say do a lot of scrolling before you decide to add something to your basket, okay? And other companies, they also sell this. So just basically if you put on um, OptiCare, it'll come up. I think chemist.net um, is one of the companies that actually sell this one. Um, I think they do also sell the Arthros 5 and 10 as well. So it's a case of, of having a look. Um, the unit dose ones, the, the drop aid, the Santan drop aid, the Taya Iot, and the Santan multi dose, they're all available on our website. Okay. Um, at the moment, well, they always will be actually, they're available. Um, eventually, in the next couple of weeks, as far as I know, Joe, we will have these, um, the OptiCares and the Arthro 5 and 10s, so they'll be back on our website if you want to purchase them from us. Um, the Auto Drop and the Auto Squeeze will also be available on our website. Now, the Auto Squeeze, I think we're the only ones who have this. Me. but the auto drop you could ask because some pharmacists actually sell these again prices vary okay but um as far as i know the auto squeeze is only available from us or directly from the uh, manufacturer but i think normally it's i don't know if the manufacturers actually sell them to the public so for this it will only be from uh, glaucoma uk at the moment okay and the I guide the one I showed you the last one that we don't supply. I think Joe's put a link up for the I range, which you'll be able to go in and, and purchase from them from that company. I think some are available on the RNOB website as well. Um, they are, yeah, they are. But um, but as I said, check the different websites. But um, but you need to be where because prices vary. They can be crazy. You know, you could pay three pound foot on one website and then on another website it'll be over seven eight pound so it's worth checking out a few yeah so if you actually just put the name of the compliance aid on the search bar on the computer you'll be able to click on the different companies who sell them and then you'll be able to do a price 
price check on each one, take it from there, really. As Trish said, we are hoping to, we've had sort of various issues with um, our, our sort of website and, and a few different things, which is why we're not stocking them at the moment. But hopefully in the next in the next few weeks, they will be available. So do keep checking our website or calling the helpline and we'll be able to um, update you as to whether we can stock them. We do want to be able to sell them to you directly. So apologies for the, the sort of slight lack of clarity that, that we can offer at the moment. Bear with us and soon they'll be available. Um, we, you talked a little bit about keeping them in the fridge or um, or not and temperature yes. and things. Um, do you want to talk about the cool wallets and sort of keeping them cool and things? If you need? Oh, yes, bear with me. Just want to get one out of the box. <clears throat> right, sorry about that. So professional. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so this is the cool wallet, okay? Um, it's made by a company called Frio. Now we do normally have these, but at the moment, again, we've got a few issues, but hopefully they'll be back on the, um, on the website soon. So the way these work is that, um, so this is just a sample, so it's not complete, I do apologize. But what it does, it comes with a gel crystal pouch. And what you would do, you would absorb the gel crystal pouch in cold water until it expands. And then you would pop your drop bottle in and that keeps the drop bottles cool up to 48 hours. And the, the gel crystal will go in this little waterproof pouch here as well. Um, and to reactivate it, you just submerge the gel crystals again in cold water and that will keep the drops cool for up to 48 hours. Now, the important thing is with a cool wallet is you mustn't um, store it in a plastic bag. It has to breathe. OK, so never put it in a plastic bag and also if you're these are great for when you're traveling to hot countries okay so if you go to somewhere and you have no refrigeration wherever you're staying you know you haven't got that worry of keeping the drops cool because that's what the frio drop bottle holder does um but if you where you are staying if they do have refrigeration take them out of the cool wallet the drop bottles, put them in the fridge, okay, and let the gel crystal pouch dry naturally on the windowsill or something like that. And again, when you're traveling back home, you can just reactivate the, uh, the gel crystal pouch again, and it's okay. Then there's also no issues about going through customs with these either, because customs are aware of it, because they were originally designed for people who are uh, diabetic to hold their insulin. So they're very much aware of that. So, and it comes, this is a large one. This holds up to three bottles and there is one, it's slightly small, about half the size of this. And that holds one bottle. Um, if you're on the, if you're using the individual vials, as I showed you, these ones here, the large one holds up to 30 and the small one holds up to 10. Yeah, but that's taking them out of the foil packaging that it would, that it comes in, that the individual vials come in. So keep the full packaging with you, just fold it up. And when you get to your destination, if you do have a fridge, just put the vials back into the full packaging and then put them back in the fridge. Thank you. And when you talked about putting them in the fridge before, do you want to just explain sort of why some people find it helpful to, to keep yeah, the leaves absolutely. to drop in the fridge, just so we understand. Yeah. understand. Yeah. So sometimes people, because um, if it's... Um, if they find it difficult feeling it going into the eye, having it cold, they, a, they feel it going into the eye. And some people say they feel they think it's more soothing when they feel it going into the eye as well, because it's cool. So it's more soothing for them. So um, if you can store your drop in the fridge, store it in, I tend to say store it in the door of the fridge um, because the temperature is constant. Or you could put it on the shelf of the fridge as well, but make sure it's not too far back near the near the cool, the cool plate at the back of the fridge because it can, because temperatures can change that way and then that'd be too cold for the drop. So either in the door of the fridge or the, or the front part of the shelving of the fridge. Um, we used to say to people, definitely do that. I mean, if it's, a, if it's really hot, having a heat wave, how often is that happening here in the UK? But if you do have a heat wave, then obviously the drop mustn't go above 25 degrees centigrade because then that can affect the efficacy, it can affect how well the drop works. So leaving it in the fridge, leaving it cool, 
it will be it'll be okay for that yeah but always check the as i say the storage information leaflet on the um, patient information leaflet that comes in the storage information and or if not you can check with the manufacturer you can phone them up and check with them and they'll be able to advise you or even the pharmacist in fact they might be able to help you as well mm -hmm. Definitely, thanks. And if people have left it in the fridge, they need to make sure they give it a good shake afterwards, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. Great. So someone's asked, has sort of commented that they, um, they've sort of left their bottle in the car once when it was really, really hot, and it, um, it, they think it got too hot. So what should what should people do if they're if they're worried that their bottle has got either really hot or or really cold, and it might have sort of got some damage? Get hold of the pharmacist. Uh, contact the pharmacist, pop along and explain to them the situation and they should be able to give you a replacement bottle, okay? Some pharmacists are very accommodating, they realise what's happened. Others say, well, you need to contact your GP and get another prescription before we can do that for you. But check with the pharmacist first and see if they're happy to, to exchange it for a different bottle, you know, for a, a new one. But otherwise, it will be your GP you need to contact. Yeah, great, thank you. And I know some people, we all know that kind of, as you said, life gets in the way and sometimes it's very difficult to put your eye drops in, um, you know, exactly the right time. So, or maybe people forget a dose or two. So what, what could we say to people who are, have maybe missed some doses and are feeling a bit worried about the effect that that might have? On that okay, eye? so if you normally put your drop in, say, for example, seven in the morning, okay, and then you realise around nine or ten o'clock in that day, you forgot to put your drop in put your drop in when you remember, okay? But if it's hours down the line, say you, you should have put it in at seven and then you realized you hadn't done it and it was like four, three or four o'clock in the afternoon, for example, um, then leave it. Don't worry about it. It won't damage you, it won't damage your eye anymore. It won't affect your glaucoma. Just leave it and just carry on a normal regime the following morning. But um, try not to do it too often. Yeah. So, so missing your missing your eye drops very occasionally, you know, is, is not going to cause lasting harm, but no. missing it a lot is more likely to. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. Great. Lovely. Right. We are really running out of time. So we've got two more questions and then we'll have to wrap up. So what's the lifespan of a cool wallet? How long can it last for? Um, they say 18 months, I think, is a cool wallet. But um, it depends often on how you use it, okay, with a lifespan of the actual gel crystals themselves. So it can last a lot longer. It can last about two, two and a half years, I suppose, you know, roughly. But if you haven't used it for a while and then you've noticed that when you uh, put the, the gel crystals in water to expand and they don't work as well as they did at the beginning, that's basically telling you, no, you know, we've, we've died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great, sorry. We're getting um, some another question about the uh, single dose units. Actually, is one of those little vials enough to do both eyes? Sometimes they can be. Yeah, some people say that one vial does do both eyes. You know, again, it depends very much on how much they press it. You know, how much drop comes out. Um, but um, it sometimes it does too. Others it doesn't. So it's a case of see how you go. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. If there's any drop left, dispose of it. Yeah, lovely. Thank you so much. Right, we've actually run out of time. I'm aware there are a couple of questions I haven't answered, the ones that have come in quite late. Um, if you, if I haven't managed to answer your question, please feel free to call the helpline and they will be able to give you a really detailed answer to your question. I'm just, we're wrapping up. We've got one minute left. I'm just going to wrap this up now. So Thank you so much, Trish, for a really fabulous talk and a really, really good q and I think that was there was so much information there, and I hope a lot of you have got information that you found helpful there. Oh, no, you're welcome. As I've said, um, if we haven't answered your question or maybe you think of one after the talk, um, I've put our helpline details up on the screen there. You're welcome to call them um, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 5 p.m., and you can um, ask them all the questions that you have. I'm just going to launch our second poll now to see um, how much you think you've learned over the course of the talk. Um, and because we just want to make sure that, you know, you're getting something out of these talks. We do want to make sure that you feel you're learning something from them. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about some of our upcoming series of talks as well. The next one will be during NHS Self-Care Week. 
and we're doing a first for Glaucoma UK and we're running some Glaucoma safe yoga sessions. When I said earlier, some things aren't so good for glaucoma, yoga is one of them. So we all know getting a bit of exercise is, is great for our well-being, but some people worry about the effects of being upside down in yoga, um, you know, head below your heart and the effects of that on eye pressure. So our speaker, Khalid, is an experienced yoga teacher who also has glaucoma. We're running two sessions. The first is for people who have reasonable mobility and can stand happily. And the second is slightly gentler and based on being seated. So they're taking place on the 16th of November at 11 a.m. and the 17th of November at 3 p.m. I think the, um, our both sessions are suitable for beginners. I think the standing one is fully booked, but we do have a waiting list and there are still spaces in the seated yoga session. We also have talks coming up about glaucoma and cataracts and one on driving and glaucoma. And we're busy planning our series for early 2022 um, as we speak. So visit our website or call our helpline for more information and to register. So thank you again to Trish for that really helpful and um, interesting and useful talk. Please consider completing the survey which will launch when the webinar ends. We want these sessions to be really good for you. We want you to find them helpful and enjoyable. So the more feedback we receive, the better the sessions we will provide. So thank you everyone. Thank you Trish. Okay. And goodbye.